Quentin Crisp, who describes himself as an unregenerate degenerate, seems to have shifted his attention from mannerisms to manners. He's living in New York, where he's been called a powdered messiah, and he's publishing a book here next Monday called Manners from Heaven. Confessing that for most of his 75 years, he's been guilty of bad manners, he's now seen the light. Good manners are a way of getting what we want without appearing to be an absolute swine. If he were to have his time again, he would create a new profession, manners consultant. This would and does go down well in the United States. Once a peacock without a cause, he now has a mission to mend our manners. And Saturday Review followed him this week in New York and London, practicing what he preaches. This week I have spent with one foot in New York, which since 1981 has been my new home, and London, where I lived for so many years. I've often been asked why I left. I felt that in England I was being asked to be what a screenwriter, Mr. Cox, called a yes man in no man's land. The great difference between Americans and the English is that Americans want you to succeed because they feel you may drag them forward with you, while the British want you to fail because they fear you may leave them behind. I've always been American in my heart, ever since I saw my first movie. The moment I saw New York in 1977, I wanted it. This week, a most exciting thing happened to me. On a hot summer's day, I was invited to visit the offices of Vanity Fair on Madison Avenue by Miss Tina Brown, who used to rule the Tatler in England. Do you find it's an advantage to be English in America? I mean, I know one must never say uh, everything is better in England. In fact, before I came here, I asked somebody whether I should learn the language. And he said, on no account, the more English you sound, the more likely you are to be believed. <laughs> so that's a great help. It's a help, I, but I also think it, it's something to overcome. It's a, it's a kind of dual thing. I think that uh, Americans still have a sort of sense that the English are posh, which they quite like in some ways, but they also quite resent in other ways. So there is a sort of, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich feel at the same time as, as sort of appreciating the quality that England has, for some reason, st still stands for. Have your views about what people want to read changed? Do you think Americans want to read different things in a magazine from what the English wish to read? Well, America is, I find, just far too big to get any sense of a sort of uh, very refined sensibility of what they want. It's not for me like editing the Tatler where I was appealing to one group, almost talking to a group that I knew intimately. I mean, there are times here where I think, who are you out there? <laughs> you know? Yes. But uh, I do find it is different, yes, and I have to go with my sort of gut feeling of what is interesting and I have to really believe in what I'm doing because mm. there will be so many people to talk me out of what I wanted to do because of the largeness of the place and yes. the complexity of the place, that in a way, believing in your own ideas is more important than anything else. And if you can really convince yourself that what you're doing is right, then the chances are that you can communicate that, which is the way I'm trying to edit the magazine. But um, there also are some differences. I, I find, for instance, that America has no memory. It's uh, not interested in the past, and whereas nostalgia is, is a big industry in England. And indeed, at the Tatler, I always had a sort of strong nostalgic element, the sort of longing for the country house. Here, I don't think people are at all interested in the past. In fact, they're almost hostile to the past. The, the most complimentary thing anybody ever says, it seems, is that's so contemporary, which, yes. which I like, actually. I think it's, it's great. It makes you think more about what you're doing at the moment rather than falling back on some of the sort of uh, material one might have used in, in, in other magazines. While I was there, Miss Brown asked me to go to Nicaragua with Mr. Jesse Jackson. I was delighted. I would dearly love to work for Vanity Fair, which, by the way, is not a frivolous or even a fashion magazine, because of the fascinating ideas expressed in every issue. The latest edition contains an article about Mr. George by Miss Jan Morris, which might have been entitled Sex and How to Cure It. 
Mr. Jones says that sex can never be as good as a cup of tea, and Miss Morris holds the opinion that soon sex as a method of procreation will become obsolete. That department will be taken over by the scientists, and we should all be free to enjoy all the aspects of our personalities. Of course, though I adore every stick and stone of New York, I cannot deny that living there has its disadvantages. All that happiness has to be paid for. One of the slightly disgraceful ways in which I eke out a living there is to write movie reviews for various magazines. Most recently, I witnessed Splash, in which the hero falls in love with a fish, or at least a part-time fish. I have christened it the world according to Carp. I have returned briefly to the British Isles, not only to bring you news of the happiness that awaits you on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, but also to promote a book called, for Hutchinson. It is called Manners from Heaven, and is intended to distinguish between the etiquette that prevails in England and the manners of Americans, which are a process of inclusion intended to make everyone, even foreigners, feel at home. When I was only English, although technically I lived in Chelsea, in my heart I was a resident of Soho, and it was there that in my youth I sat for hours in dim cafes in Compton Street. It is therefore appropriate that tonight I should celebrate my return to Britain in the Soho Brasso. Fashionable social event. <laughs> you look, uh, the last time I saw you, we were sharing a Friday in Lower Fourth Street. Oh, yeah. New York. That's right. Never forget an egg. <laughs> shooting uh, that one for the album cover. You know they're doing a record of us together. Did you not know that? <laughs> That's what they're doing on uh, Sunday. They're recording us and they're doing a video as well. Oh no, I don't have to be careful. I think we can be reckless. Quentin, how are you? I'm amazed to see you. So am I. So am I. This I'm is so many totally years. unexpected. It is indeed. <laughs> and how have we been all these long, dark years? Do you remember that the last time I met you, you said, I don't believe in a brawl? I did indeed. And I was wrong. You were wrong. I can't believe that. Yeah, I sin. I do sin. actually believe in a brawl now. <laughs> and to me now, England is an island off the coast of America. Quentin Crisp who feels that heavenly good manners are all you need to get you to the nicest parties. <laughs>